right, let's check out uh, another game on Sunday. We'll move to the NFC. You got the Eagles playing the Panthers. Carolina open three and a half, down to three. Total of 46 and a half. The Eagles off that Monday night game. Quarterback Sam Bradford is the new quarterback. Nine touchdowns, nine interceptions. Not quite to what Chip Kelly had in mind. DeMarco Murray has terrible numbers. However, he hasn't been healthy until this Monday night game against the Giants, 27 to seven. Finally had over 100 yards. And the defense played exceptionally well once again. So, Harvard, uh, I'm wondering, uh, is the Philly defense the strength of this team and not the no-huddle offense people talked about? Well, if you're looking for offense uh, and Sam Bradford, who needs them? They don't yeah. need this guy. I mean, they're seventh in points no matter what he's doing, 26 points a game. But I'll tell you what, the offense looked alive last night, you know, and i, I got to be very careful. You know, you're, you're only as good as the last game that you saw, witnessed, watched, and uh, I don't want to get too hyped up on the Eagles for what I saw last night. But I think what happened was they knew if they could beat the Giants last night, they would slip into first place at a sparkling 3-3 three and three record. <laughs> And uh, reminds me of last year with that NFC South, you know, uh, you know, Carolina getting there with seven and nine uh, finals. But Carolina, are they for real? Who knows? Uh, they got their work cut out for them because running back uh, Matthew Sproles, DeMarco Murray for the Eagles, uh, you know, they, it seems like maybe uh, things are clicking just at this time. But when you look at Carolina, all I can remember is, well, who did they play? Well, they beat maybe, uh, you know, I don't even remember every game they've played, but they're playing in the NFC South. They just come off beating Seattle, but I don't have a lot of respect for Seattle other than they beat them at, uh, you know, uh, uh, up there in the South, uh, Seattle. Uh, their offense, they're number four against rushing. Uh, their defense, they're number 10 in yards allowed. They're number six against the run. They're number four in points allowed. Uh, Cam Newton, seven touchdowns. Uh, he's, he, and also, he's, he's getting it done with his feet. Uh, he's legged out almost 200 yards rushing, uh, throwing for 55%. He needs to get that number up. But now you look at it, if they played on a neutral field, and basically this is what I have to ask myself, if they were playing this at, uh, you know, in San Diego Stadium, who would win this game? I don't know. That's it. I just don't know. Uh, I, this game is so balanced because Carolina, I think the bookmakers, the odds makers, I think they feel like nobody is going to give Carolina a lot of respect so they can actually make the line maybe a little bit lower than what it needs to be. So if you have to put a gun to my head and say, who are you going to take for this type of game? I guess I'd have to take Carolina and lay the three points. On oh, this Carolina team undefeated, 4-1 and one against the spread. And uh, the numbers say that they're doing everything well right now. Offense is third in the NFL in rushing. They're sixth in points scored. The great defense, in which they usually have, has been terrific. Top 10 in yards. Number 11 against the run and only sixth in points allowed. Cam Newton has twice as many touchdowns as interceptions. And the win uh, last Sunday was impressive. 27-23 comeback at Seattle in a hostile environment. Long road trip. So, Zach, what do you make of these surging Panthers? You know, I just talked about coaching, and I don't think there's a coach doing any better better than right now than uh, Ron Rivera for Carolina Panthers. Uh, you saw it towards the end of last season when a team buys into a coach. What can happen? They won five in a row to finish out the season, or four in a row to finish out the season, got into the playoffs, beat the Arizona Cardinals, and they played semi-decent against the Seattle Seahawks team in which they lost in the playoffs last year. They go back up there this year with confidence and get an outright win. And I don't know how many teams have won in Seattle over the last two to three years, but not many. So that, that can't be overlooked. But they just have this quiet confidence if you count those four or five games last year. And then the five this year, they've won nine in a row. So this team is confident that they can keep it going. And right now, it's not anything amazing. They're just playing balanced football. And that's how you win in the, fo in the NFL. I don't see that from the Philadelphia Eagles right now. You know, their wins against the Jets, their wins against the Giants. It's not really balanced football. It's just those teams playing absolutely horrible. The Jets in that game threw four picks with Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, yesterday with Eli Manning. They had probably his worst game of uh, the last three or four years. Uh, you give some of that credit to the Philadelphia Eagles, but a lot of that was just poor play by both of those teams. Um, and like Hollis said, this will be a very, very tight game. you got to expect money to come in on the Eagles. But I think in the end, Cam Newton, he's playing phenomenal right now. Ron Rivera right up there with Bill Belichick for NFL coaches right now. And you can't ignore that nine-game nine winning streak of the Carolina Panthers. That's a good point. Yeah, I would look at that. The, 
maybe a defensive game because this Eagles defense has really impressed me with the overhaul that Chip Kelly did in the offseason. They're playing great. They did it again on Monday night, allowing just seven points. Do have some question marks with the Eagles offense, though, not just the injuries that they've had. But Sam Bradford, nine touchdowns, nine picks, not very impressive at all. He's going on the road against an undefeated team in a hostile environment. I find it very difficult to back the Eagles. And as Hall has mentioned, yeah, they're on a nice winning streak here for first place, but they're still a three and three <laughs> team. And then there's the job that uh, Ron Rivera has done. Eagles were a losing team on Monday night and noticed that the, the uh, Carolina 28 and one against the spread against a losing team doesn't quite fit this model right now, but the Eagles haven't uh, had a winning record until the Sunday night. But more important, the Eagles, when they face a winning team, 6-17 and one against the spread, kind of a cheap number here, our back home team and the undefeated Panthers with the much more stable quarterback. One more thing to add on there that I was just thinking about. Last year, Let's not forget when uh, Mark Sanchez was quarterbacking how they ran up that score on Monday Night Football against the Panthers. That uh, Teams don't forget that. Ah, I'm sure we'll, well then maybe they better put Sanchez back in. <laughs> <laughs> He'll definitely roll the game film uh, before this one. Very good. In fact, why don't they put Sanchez in? I mean, Bradford's not getting it. Uh, not, not stellar numbers, no. All right, before we get to our last Monday night game, if you want to get free plays sent right to your cell phone, you can just text a GAME, G-A-M-E, to 25827. You get free plays every day from Jim Feist.